What's up, good people? I see we already in the house. You guys already waiting on us. You guys already waiting on us. Listen, before we get started, there's something that I want you guys to know right off the bat. This is the Stock Squad. You got Stocks with Mo. You got Stocks with Josh. You got Keenan Grace. I said Stocks with Josh. That's Stock Mo. And you got that handsome gentleman there. Hey, we are all the Stock Squad. We are the Stock Squad. And after this live, we will be going over into the Patreon slash Discord, okay? And that's who this video is sponsored by. I got the guys ready and waiting, okay? Also, two, I want to get this in the way. For those of you that haven't taken stock up you, you know what I did? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to discuss it when the guys get on. I did some live trading in there, and then I posted it in my psychology trading. Yep. While the Fed was talking, I made $2,000, and I'm posting to show you how. All right? So, without further ado, we're going to bring these gentlemen to the front of the room. Give them a hand, good people. Let's see some hearts. Let's see some hearts. Give them a hand. All right. All right. Hey, Mo, we got you at the top. I want you to give one minute and just say your hellos, and then we're going to get right into it. Oh, man. I hope everyone out there is having a great time. Uncle Larry, thank you for allowing me on. More importantly, family, put some birthday cakes in the chat. Our host having his birthday turn in 29, Uncle Mommy. Larry Jones in the house. Loving life, and I am happy to see him celebrating another lap around the well, let's see, the sun. So we did good. So happy birthday, Uncle Larry. Thank you very much for having me on. I'm looking forward to talking crypto. I'm looking forward to the Fed talk today. I can't wait to pick your guys' brains on where we're going. It's been hectic, but I think there's a lot of money to be made. All right. I was trying to time it. I thought you was finished, but forget about that. Almost. All right. Now I can. <laughs> Almost. All right. Well, I am going to go to... This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Keenan right now. Keenan, go ahead and say hello to the people. Lawrence of Arabia. Let's go. What's going on, family? So Larry asked me, Keenan, he said, look, you got, you, I don't know what you're doing today, man. I said, we trying to get that Dubai money, man. Yes, sir. You trying to get that Dubai money with me? Let me know in the chat. And just to put that into perspective, right? Because you know me, I like to get real practical with it. There's a company called Saudi Aramco. Now, this company, you might not be able to see it, but maybe. It's one of the top three biggest companies in the entire world, up there with Apple, up there with Microsoft. And their profit that they bring in, the net profit, is $121 billion. To put that into perspective, that's more than Meta, NVIDIA, Visa, Tesla, McDonald's, Costco, all of them added up together. Let's get that Dubai money, family. Let's not limit ourselves. The sky is the limit. And you know what? It's not even a limit. We can take it to space. I see you over there. <laughs> Docs with Josh. Step up to the mic. Keenan is ready to buy one of Elon's uh, first tickets to uh, Stocks on Mars. <laughs> you know, the way <laughs> Dubai money is, you know, they don't even, we got that buddy over there, Larry Connor, Connor Kenny. He's the Yeah, I got a couple of them. And he, uh, you know, he's not paying any federal state tax, either federal or state. And he uh, said that there was no sales tax there for the first couple of years. And that in the ahead of him, he said they're going to be introducing a nominal sales tax. And, uh, you know, we as a part of getting that Dubai money <laughs> is learning how to shake off some of that tax uh, burden. But that's a whole other conversation. You know, today uh, I'm, I'm going to just very micro. First of all, I'm pleased to be here. My goal in this time together is to is for us to engage on some stocks and crypto in such a way that we sharpen off each other and we come up with some brilliant ideas and some brilliant observations and those people out there. In our community, we come up with some hot trades. Whenever we spend time together as a group, you know, something out of that conversation comes as a focal point. And uh, typically that's been a good investment in the past. So I'm really excited about this conversation. The Fed is dovish. We had a we had a dovish Fed in my view. And, uh, you know, the markets liked it. And uh, I'm curious to see how much higher stock and crypto can climb off of that positive or that dovish fed but greetings to everybody let's go all right all right all right 
Speaking of the Fed, we're going to get right into it. Now, I, I'm going to keep this one moving. So we're just going to just say what we need to say. If somebody says something crazy, we're not going to spend any time <laughs> uh, uh, giving it any time right now. We just want to hit you guys with the bang, bang, bang. All right. So let's go with the Fed. The Fed. Hey, the Fed was a good boy today. All right. I got a meme like the uh, stock board all red and the main and, and the Fed is taking a picture in front of it. Like, look at what I did. That didn't happen today. All right. He was a good boy. He uh, he he held steady. Uh, stocks like it. Crypto like it. I don't know if you guys looked at crypto. We're going to get into crypto for all you cryptos heads. Do not sign off. Thank you guys for your birthday wishes. Do not sign off. We're going to get to crypto. We're going to front end this with stocks, and then we're going to get to crypto, right? So listen, there's something that happens every time the Fed speaks, right? Generally, the day before he speaks, there's a run up, and then it peaks the morning that he speaks, and then it falls during he says something negative, and it just tanks, right? And then sometimes it's bullish towards the end. Well, he was pretty, he was pretty uh, level-headed today, and um, we, it was expected that he was dovish, okay, and he wasn't hawkish, all right? Hey, thank you for your super chat, Jason. God bless you too, brother. I appreciate it. Okay, so you know what? Mo, I want you to go ahead and let's talk about stocks. I want you, I didn't want this one to be so uh, confined where, you know, you didn't have, couldn't talk about what you want to talk about. I want you to talk about, take five minutes, talk about the Fed and the stocks. We're going to get to crypto later. Don't cover crypto at all. Stocks. Go, Mo. You got it. You got it. Yeah, no problem. So stocks I've been looking at, Foot Family, if you guys have been over on my channel, you know I've been DCAing into Tesla. Tesla is one of them plays that we've been discussing. I think we talked about it, the squad, the last time we were live over at my channel uh, two weeks ago. And we talked about where it could go and I had the chart and I still have the chart. So I'm going to pull up the chart real quick and we could talk a little bit about it. And we were talking like two weeks ago, we had that crash down. And of course I said, the, the base I saw was at 163 with an ultimate base of support at 153. I thought this would be the one it should hold. And so I ended up buying at 161, which this is right here. And we did this in the squad. I gave that alert out to the members. Uh, the squad members knew I was buying at 161. I did. And it was almost the perfect bottom. It hit 160, a little under 161, and then instantly bounced back up. That was a risky move because if it didn't hold, we were going to run down to 153, which a lot of people believe that was going to be the support. Now, at that point, uh, it has risen back up to 175. Post hours today, up another $2 a share to 177 a share for those that weren't paying attention for the after hour. So I like Tesla. And remember, if you just for people out there with the Fed, when the Fed finally starts to cut, a couple of things. One, you're going to go ahead and see the cost to buy a vehicle drop. Two, we had some big news out there. What was the big news, Mo? What's going on? Oh, some people are going to hate this, Uncle Larry. Some people are going to hate this. Hmm. I know you guys can't see it well, but I'll read it. EPA issues new auto rules aimed at cutting carbon emissions, boosting electric vehicles and hybrids. Oh, I have people I talk to personally or friends of mine, and we do not agree on this. I think EVs are, are very good. I think they're going to grow. They're in the beginning stages of building. They will advance and be very advanced vehicles. But there are those truest that hate EVs, and they can just absolutely hate the, the, the control of being forced to buy something new. And so there's a lot of people that hate both sides. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm a fan of EVs. I think they're going to be game-changing around the world. And of course, with that being said, the EPA and the government steps in and they mandate things to make changes. And of course, that's some people hate the government getting involved in anything. To me, I, I looked at this not as a government, political. I, I, anybody who watched my channel, you guys know I don't get involved in the politics. I want to know how to make money. That's what it's about. And so in making money, do you see the EPA and the government forcing us I'm not here to debate right and wrong about that, but forcing us to move towards an electric vehicle society as good or bad for Tesla. It's a simple question. I think everybody in the chat will say, it's good for Tesla, Mo. You might not agree with what they're doing. Is it good for Tesla? Yes. Has, has the US advanced to the point where everybody's buying EVs yet? No, 
as China exploded and everybody buying EVs. Yeah, they, they're starting to really blow up with that. And China, where, where Tesla gets a monster amount of their revenue, is now doing quantitative easing, big time quantitative easing, which will allow Tesla to increase their revenue, even though they're shrinking a little bit of that profit margin because they are lowering prices and competing. I still think Tesla is setting itself up, maybe not this year for a monster blow up, but as the Fed starts lowering rates at the end of this year and into 2025, people in the US will start to be able to afford to get a lot more cars. The infrastructure will continue to grow. And in China, they're doing quantitative easing and stimulus of $250 billion to prop up that market and the economy. All of this should help Tesla. So I look at Tesla as where's the bottom? Hopefully we hit it. I can't promise you that. But long term, am I comfortable getting in at this price knowing where I think it's going to go? And my answer is yes. And so that's what I kind of been watching and buying and stuff this week and doing amongst other plays out there. And we'll see. But the Fed's actions today kind of lead to the point that they said we are still going to cut three times this year, most likely. So that was good news for Tesla fans. That's why the stock has risen and is still rising in the after hours. And we'll see if it's good news for some of my TMF plays and other plays out there as we go through this year. That is absolutely cool. Keenan. What do you think about that, man? What do you think about what the Fed said? And just just go your way. Okay, so let me unmute myself. So first of all, family, again, Larry, thanks for having me on. Good to see you, Josh. And good to see you, Mo. On the Stock Squad Patreon, we just ran a call option on the SPY. And let me tell you something. If you ever had this problem, this is a good problem to have. But it's a problem nonetheless. When you get into a trade, we got into a SPY call option. And I knew that the Fed were going to say, what they kept saying, one thing I got to give the Fed credit for is they've been consistent. They've been saying higher for longer, higher for longer. They get on, everybody's like, I wonder what they're going to say. So that I say, you know what? They're probably going to say higher for longer and three rate cuts like they've been saying eventually. And then they went and said it. And then we got the spy up to like 521. Yesterday, we got into a spy call that I alerted everybody on. And then it went up. Now, this is the problem. I took profits on it. And then it kept running up. So now it's up 100%, but nobody ever lost a dollar taking profit. So if you ever got out of a play a little too early, let me know in the chat. Put a one in the chat so I know exactly who, who is suffering with me. Family, we suffer from success right now. That's what kind of market we're in. We suffer from success. But understand me on this. There's so much more plays to be had and to be made. The one thing that you don't want to do is be losing money in a bull market. There are people who I've seen come by and they'll comment and they'll say, man, I'm just losing and losing. And I'm thinking, how are you losing in a bull market? If you just had an ETF or a tech stock, you would just be on fire the whole time. What you got to do is you got to realize you can't be in every trade in all trades. When people show me their success, they show me that they got like 20 trades going at once and they can't manage any one of them. Because they're like, oh, man, I'm losing on that one. Maybe, maybe it'll come back. This one is running, and then they're losing at the same rate that they're winning. So I see a lot of ones rolling in, family. But guess what? You're suffering from success. That's the best kind of suffering that you could do. When you're successful, and you could have been a little bit more successful, so we're going to be okay. But what I want you to know now is this. Something practical I always like to leave you with. And the market, when we get rate cuts, what happens is, all of the money that is on the sideline of the market, they're saying that it's between six and 12, like trillion dollars. To put that into perspective, that's like between five and 10 times as much as all the Bitcoin that exists. That money is sitting in high yield savings accounts and money market accounts. Having money in those accounts is going to become less attractive because the yields are going to go down when the Fed starts to cut those rates. So then some of that money, not all, will have the opportunity to go either into crypto or stocks or even some into both. So what we're going to see is larger pumps, but also larger dumps. So the volatility that's on the way, as soon as the Fed decides to change things up, we're going to see bigger spikes. So you've got to learn how to have a strong foundation so that you can trade as well, but also learn how to make money on the way down because nothing goes up forever. So that's what I got for you. All right. Hey, Josh, just hold on one second. I just want to answer one question. Uh, it's a great question today. And you said, uh, Andrew, do, do I do a monthly payment? Listen, 
I want you guys to look at this. This is all of these you could pay for the class. It's like buy now, pay later, all except Sizzle. So after pay, Klarma, whatever this is, and a firm, you could buy now and pay later. So you can purchase the class through there on checkout, okay? Josh, what you got to talk about today? I know you got a lot. Well, all right. I mean, let's just, first of all, I want to acknowledge, Larry, if it's okay, uh, Stock Brother. I noticed that he gave Stock a generous brother. gift. Yes. Talk about, <laughs> talk you, about the brother. Yeah, he gave you a nice, generous gift. And I, you know, I think that this guy has something to contribute to the investment community. His he specialty does. is penny stocks. So I can't talk about penny stocks because they're very risky. And if I talk about one, then you know, uh, people will ask me for technicals on it every day and I'll move down the street, you know, uh, but uh, but Stock Brother does focus on the highest risk penny stocks. He fishes for stuff on the move. Uh, go check out his channel. And I noticed that he gave you a nice little gift there. Stock Larry. Brother, I appreciate you, brother. Much love. Uh, all right, guys, let's talk briefly about Tesla. I gave a prediction in the discord um, sometime back, a couple days back when we had turned around uh, from the recent low, right around the 163 level was the, the support I gave. And I said that yesterday that I saw us clearly moving back to 177.30. That's the uh, strong resistance. And so here's what I want people to understand who are thinking about or buying Tesla or wanting to figure out which direction it's going. There's a major problem in the chart regarding the recent uh, turnaround that we had, and that's that there wasn't enough momentum or volume to suggest that it was a change of character or any form of a reversal. So we're, I, I mentioned this and I'm just going to re uh, I'll underline it and put it in bold that we're going to come up to 177. Now we're, we took another day and another green candle up, but we're still going to have to get up there and hit that. And the only way that I will believe that the bottom is in for Tesla and there's no more going down at any point over the next 30 days is if when we get above 177 and close, we get a monstrous high volume green candle, okay? Like a breakout, nobody was expecting it kind of a moment. Until that happens, I have to assume that we have not bottomed, we have not got a reversal moment, we're simply uh, trading in a range that's slowly moving down. Guys, I'm gonna reiterate on this page, there's no wishes, there's no dreams, there's no hoping, there's no flipping a nickel into the fountain. You gotta get momentum and volume to signal uh, a buy in the chart. now. I think Tesla is a is positioned well for people that had not participated in this and don't have a big enough position in it for the future ahead of us, right? I believe that when the Fed ultimately goes to cut rates, we're going to see Tesla build momentum. I believe that we'll have another $315 Tesla stock today. Yeah. And so if you're looking at when to invest, please don't you know, I mean, you can, you know, I appreciate every comment I get. I, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, but I, but I do, it does kind of rub me a little bit when stuff's peaking, it's at its top. And then people say, should I buy today? No. If you're interested in owning Tesla, I don't even want you to consider buying it on the third or fourth quarter of 2024, unless you had the conviction to buy it right now. I have Thanks. the conviction to invest in Tesla right now. I, even though you say, well, Josh, you just said we're at the bottom. I'm not trying to catch the bottom. Like I said, we could go to 177 and, and we could rocket ship volume from there on some good news story. So this is the bottom zone. My personal target, if we do not break out with high volume above 177, my personal target at this moment is right around 154. Um, and then we'll have to assess it from there. Now, Larry, before I wrap up, I want to say two more things. Yes, this sir. is a conversation is about looking at companies that are unattractive, that are just a little bit uh, beat down, forgotten, ignored. And, you know, and I'm gonna throw a couple names out there. One of them is SoFi. SoFi is someone asked earlier, what's a high target for SoFi? Could it get back to eleven dollars? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. SoFi is an absolute killer company. I've been with loading up on SoFi, man. Yeah, I'm going to continue. So, you know, all the big banks, 
right? There, there's a lack of connection. These, some of these names, Wells Fargo, and I don't, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. You know, Wells Fargo got thrown under the bus, but a lot of big banks cannot attract depositors. Okay. Millennials, uh, the, the following generations, they don't want to give them their money. SoFi is young and they've got the right messaging, the right marketing. And whereas the other banks have been seeing uh, deposits leaving, SoFi has been seeing deposits consistently move in. And right now, uh, you know, I would say five years from now, I think people will be looking back at this price point and uh, being, you know, regretting not taking the risk now. Um, I would say that SoFi is an attractive company to me and I, I've, it's not even the price action right now. It's the long-term story. You know, I got my kids coming to me asking me, hey, dad, we opened up an account at SoFi. Do you know anything about SoFi? Yep. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I'm going to talk today about, you know, things that have been for, you know, that aren't as hot right now. Palantir, right? You know, I mean. Hey, Josh, Pal I've been loading up on Palantir and <laughs> SoFi. Go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, let's talk about Palantir for a moment. You know, uh, right now, if you looked at the fundamentals, the fact is the stock is expensive. The multiple is high. Uh, yet, because of, I'm looking, when you look further out, so yep. you got to be willing to accept some dips. But if you have a longer view, a company like Palantir um, could really begin to fill the shoes that the market sees them in right now. The market sees them wearing big shoes, right? They've got a decent sized multiple. The stock's not expensive. Market cap's not large. But one day, I could see five years from now, this being significantly um, a higher stock, right? And so, you know, it depends on what your timeline. You know, I don't have a penny stock for you today. You got to go over to Stock Brother for that. You know, uh, we're going to get into crypto. Larry, I know we're going to have a hot conversation about yes, crypto. Yes, sir. As soon as you finish. But yeah, I threw out three names that aren't popping off right now may not even have their reversal moment just yet. But uh, the three names that Larry told you he's buying, three names that I think are attractive. Um, SoFi may not pull back more, but I identified that it could break support. Uh, you know, uh, last thing, Larry, the S&P 500, I made this prediction. It's got nothing to do with the bullish uh, dovish Fed that we just got. It has to do with where we're at. 5,500 is a target in my mind. We came up to this 5200 and we've had a nice tight uh, price action move to there, Larry. And so you got to expect some corrections, four to six percent. We're overdue for a correction. And th when that corrects, here's what everybody's going to be thinking. They're thinking the party's over. We're lofty. We're frothy. I don't think we are. OK, I think we can get up to 5500. And so uh, just be aware that we probably will have a correction in the next 30 days. That's what I'm looking at. Well, I'm right there with you. Okay. So I've been, I said this last week. If you, if you heard me say this last week, go ahead and, 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 and leave me a coffee cup in the chat. I said, un, for now, this is me. Anything that any of us say is not a suggestion for you to buy, hold, or sell. I said, I'm going to continue to put money into my portfolios, right? All of my portfolios, I'm going to continue to put the same amount of money I've been putting in, but I'm only investing 25% of that. And I'm keeping the other 75% of that because the market is so hefty, so top heavy right now. I'm expecting a slight pullback. And when that pullback happens and others are running scared, I will be a fireman and you will be firemen and firewomen and go in and buy. That's the reason why I buy the beat down stock. But we about to shift, right? We're going to shift. Now, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to see if I can come up full screen and I want to talk about and share with you guys a few things. All right. We're in the crypto right now. Number one, bam. When I looked at this today and I'm looking at the day and I see that boom. I said 59, boom, for Bitcoin, boom. And look at that. It just bounced right up, right up to 67 after the Fed got through speaking. Here's some of the things I want you guys to know about Bitcoin, right? Grayscale's spot ETF. Look at this. The other day, it saw, two days ago, it saw record outflows of 642 uh, uh, million, right? So this is what I want you guys to see and understand what's happening with Bitcoin, okay? So now we got the charts and we got fundamentals. I want you all to be aware of this, okay? Guys, uh, I'm gonna just pull myself 
all the way up and then I'll bring you guys back in. All right. So look at this. Grayscales. Look at this. Converted GBTC. You guys know it's Grayscale Fund. Witness uh, record daily outflows of 642.5 million on Monday, despite 451.5 million in inflows from BlackRock. So what's happening? There was more going out than was coming in, causing the crash that happened. All right. So listen, Grayscale has a magic number and that magic number is 12 billion. Grayscale said that if when they get to 12 billion, they'll be able to slow down the pace of outflows. All right. Look at this. Monday's outflows from Grayscale's ETF brought the total to roughly what? 12 billion since January 10th, right? So you see that through the 52% gain in Bitcoin's price has helped, look at this, counterbalance some of the losses. Now, what were the losses? The losses were tied to FTX. The, that's why Grayscale has been offloading so much and they have the highest fees because of FTX, uh, the partnership that they have with FTX. That's why Grayscale has been offloading so much. Now, here's what I also want to look at. Because that has happened, the timing was impeccable because it happened before the Fed blessed us today. Now, and I know, Josh, you got a lot um, and Mo to say about this, but I want to show you guys this, okay? This was last cycle, right? In um, April, um, April 12th of 2021, Bitcoin went all the way up to 64K. And then what happened right after April? We had a 50%, over 50% sell-off, over 50% sell-off, right? Then what happened? Six months later. So this was a correction. We had over 50% a, over of a correction. Six months later, we're back up to 69, right? And so I want to just shine a light on some of the stuff that's happening with Bitcoin. Now, of course, that's going to move what? The alts. The alts will move. And as you can see, right now, we have a sea of green for the day. Okay. If you go to the day, you're going to see a sea of green. Why? Everything is up. But what moves later? The alts, even though the alts have already moved since the Fed's speech, they generally move later. Now, I'm going to tell you guys that just like I said, 59,000, I, I saw at a local bottom. All right. Now that may change. I'm going to strike some new lines after today. And I do believe that we will get to 80,000 this year. Right. It may be before or after the halving. But I believe minimally we'll get to 80,000, right? And we may get to 120,000, but I see a clear path to 80,000, all right? Who wants to take this? I can, I can start with that, Larry. <clears throat> so all righty, let's, let's go, talk bro. about a little bit of crypto. All right, so you guys know I'm a huge, huge Ethereum, huge Ethereum. And so... What I've been watching and what I've been calling for finally happened exactly last night into the day. For anybody who's been watching the videos, we topped out and we were saying we didn't know where the top was, but once we hit it and we have a pullback, you'll know right away. And then after that pullback, look for a, a retracement of a FIB down to about 50 to 61.8. And we hit it right here. This zone right in here is the 50 to 61.8, 3180 to 2965. We came all the way down, hit right around low, we'll say mid 3000s here. That got into the zone today. Once it hit that zone, the recovery from the top, the, the normal retracement down happened and it's off and running. And off and running, it did. It fully engulfed that candle before and it's still higher. And so I look at this and then you can say, what about like Doge, the altcoins? Well, very similar. We have the run up. The retracement should go into the Goldilocks zone. We go in there for the last one, two, three, four, and it goes down below, pushes it back up right away today, and it blows right through it. 
And so you have this low around 12, and now we're we're trading back up there at 15. Folks, that's a that's a 25% gain from the bottom off the 50 EMA. This is a beautiful setup, one that I've been telling you was going to happen. I gave you the price points of every single crypto that I've been covering, and it did it over the last 48 hours perfectly. And so now we wait to see if this holds and runs and retests the top, breaks it, and we have new all-time highs, or if it fails on this recovery and we watch to see what to do next. Because if it fails on the 50, then we know it's going to be going down more. If it continues the way it's going, we should be set for new highs. And so I'm going to continue to play these. I'm loving it. The Ethereum I got, everything I got is running like a champ. So I'm interested to see what you guys think about this too. Talk to me, Keenan. So everybody, I see you arguing in the chat, whether it's Solana or if it's Ethereum or if it's this or if it's that. At the end of the day, and I had made a video on this, I want to say yesterday, maybe two days ago, you got to think about what you're doing this for. So like I'm an investor and I'm a trader, but I would say I'm an investor first because I know there's way more money to be made if you trade and then fund your investments with all of your trade money. At the end of the day, I'm trying to make money. Right. I'm not trying to be in the Doge army. I'm not trying to be in the Solana gang. I'm not trying to be in the Bitcoin gang. I'm trying to be in the money gang. I'm trying to be in the financial freedom gang. You know what I'm saying? And if I could go and buy new iPhones today and then sell them for higher than what I bought them for, then I'd be doing that. It's all about how you could turn $1 into two and then turn that two into four. Don't get so caught up and tied to some of these movements that you might find yourself in that you miss out on all of the opportunities that are in front of you. If I see the opportunity to make a lot of money with Ethereum, I'm headed there. If I see a lot of money to make the, or a lot of opportunities to make money with Solana or whatever, Floki coin, whatever, I'm going there. I'm gonna understand it thoroughly. A lot of people lack the confidence to make money on the market. And you gotta remember, your competence is gonna lead you to the path to the confidence. Steph Curry, one of the best basketball players of all time, best shooting basketball players of all time. Why is he confident that he can shoot threes? It's because he made so many of them, because he put so much of the practice in. You understand what I'm saying? Shaquille O'Neal, confident back in the day that he could dunk the ball real well. He did it a million times. He's confident that he could do it. When you start to make money on the market, you're going to start to be to get more confident. When you stop losing because you learned how to manage your risk, you learn how to calculate it out, you're going to be way more confident. And then that confidence is going to clear your mind. You need to have a clear brain so you can take your heart out of it. So then you can make so much money in doing this. So I want to just give you something that I just bought today. I had picked up some more Disney today. Now, one of the reasons that I picked up Disney is because of this. I can see that we are kind of close to a local floor of about 109. If not, it will fall to 100. It's at like 116 right now but they're turning things back around. I know you remember when they was killing it with Thanos and the Avengers. I know you remember when they was killing it when they bought Star Wars. Some of that stuff has died down in the last, in a few recent years, but now they're getting back close ties with the creator of Star Wars. And that's a really good sign. The stock is just going up slowly. It's creeping up, right? So we want to just keep our eyes on things like that. Now we got this news with the Fed more money is going to pump into crypto into the stock market. So now we're seeing the crypto market just turned around overnight. And I had told you that, and it's funny when you get comments, Larry, Josh, Mo, all of you guys are going to be able to relate to this. When you hear people say, when you say what they don't want to hear, and then they argue right. with you about it. Yep. Like for example, Hey guys, I know Bitcoin is 70,000, but it might come back down to 65. And if it breaks to 65, it's going down to 60. Like I had said this, and then we had a little short that came out about me saying that. And I ain't never seen so much pushback in my life on the internet. And I've been on the internet for five years now. People didn't want to hear that Bitcoin could come down. And then what does it do? It comes down. Just like when Larry said, hey, if he's seen it hit 59,000 again, he wouldn't be surprised. It could hit 80, but guess what he's doing? He's looking at the history to see what can happen on the charts, on the momentum last right. cycle, so that if it goes up, boom, he's making money. But if it's coming down, he's not surprised. He's ready. And that's how we want to be. We want to be prepared and not surprised. So that's what I got for you. Thank you. Josh, I want you to get be loaded. I want to I step in right here, and then I want you to take it from there, Josh. 
Listen, gotcha. guys, and I got to say this because of what Keenan said. Somebody said, Larry, I said, hey, I'm going to sell a little XRP. I Man, I got so much hate because I said I was going to sell some XRP. Like these people were mining it in their basements, okay? <laughs> and I'm just, I'm like, uh, so <laughs> you tell me. Uh, Mo, you got a calculator. I don't think you're going to need one. But it was no, a month ago. It. it was a month ago. I converted my XRP, right? And I bought some Solana. And I bought some, I actually bought some bunk, right? So here's Solana. I mean, here's XRP in the last month. You see here? That's the day. Let's go to the month, right? So there's XRP for the last month, right? If you look, it hasn't moved. Look at that. Down for the, so for the month, it's up uh, 8.9%. A That's month ago, that. I converted it to Solana. You tell me, was that a good move? <laughs> yes, I'm not good with numbers, Uncle Larry, but I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this is what I'm saying to Keenan's point, man. Listen, we got to get out of these armies. Who cares? Get out of these armies. Who cares? Oh, Larry, don't sell your XRP like it's near and dear to you. Get out. Get away from that foolishness. Uh, uh, you know, I'm team this, I'm team that. Listen, when it comes to these meme coins, I got a little doge, I got a little sheep, I got a little bunk, right? I got a little all of them because they all gonna move and I got more in the one I think is gonna move more, okay? And that's just the way I'm trading. I'm not, I'm not joining your game. You must be out of your mind. <laughs> my, my daddy's still alive. He still beat my butt if I was in your game. We ain't here to join no gangs. We're here to make money. And I tell you, I killed it in crypto last cycle. And I'm just telling you, I know how to look at the charts. I know how to look at the fundamentals. But I know how to, my biggest thing was, I know how to get in early. I know how to get out early. And I simply know how to be in the fastest moving car. Talk to us, Josh. All right. So I want to break something down. Um, man, I got so much I want to uh, share that I don't even know where to begin. But Larry, <laughs> let's talk about... Let's talk about where we are at, okay? So what's significant about the current price of Bitcoin? Now, I broke this down in my video today uh, to discuss this and show it in the charts, but I wanna talk about it here so we can have the dialogue about it. So the most bullish moment in time for Bitcoin in the charts is when the price goes back to previous all-time highs, okay? When that happens, in that moment that it reaches its previous all-time high, there is often a small battle lasting no more than two weeks. We just saw that. That's followed by the strongest move that Bitcoin has, which is essentially four months and two weeks. The fifth month tends to be the capitulation moment of really a straight push up. Okay. The last time in the previous all-time high back in 2017, we eventually, we made our peak, right, in 2017, and we eventually went on a number of years of decline, winter, and when we eventually got back to the all-time high of 2017, that was go time. Now, here's the problem, so let's slow down. There's two significant pullbacks that typically would have taken place between the coming out of the winter peak and where we're at today. Normally coming up out of the winter, we would have seen at least a five to six month swing low, right? It would have been coming up out of the winter, going halfway to all time high, and then we would swing low, sit on structural support, and then we would slowly build. And about three months before the halving event, we would pick up momentum, the halving event would be a little choppy with some favoring and upward move, and that would last for five or six months. And then we would eventually get back to the previous all-time high, and the next four months would be absolutely parabolic. None of the pullback months have been included in this particular event. The, uh, the coming out of winter took much longer than normal. So the, the winter months in this last phase we're much longer and slower than normal, and we've got nothing but run-up 
after we should have seen a spike midwinter and come down, we got really late into winter and we ran all the way up to previous all time highs. Now, here's the question I'm going to I want to kick back to you guys. And there's a lot of stuff I'd love to talk about with crypto, but I want to try to get this idea. Uh, let's say you have a great conversation about it and have it well understood. Whenever we get back to all time highs, that's with the highest rocket ship moment. Is there any chance? that we will have gone from the winter to all time highs and directly into a parabolic move, not seeing even a full red candle. Could that possibly be happening right now? The answer is yes, it could, it could, it could. That doesn't I mean did. that it is, but it definitely could. Well, let me give because you my this rule. time, this time, Josh, it is different. It's already different. Look at how far we're up before the having. Go ahead. I want to make it less centralized than it's ever been because of the, the spot Bitcoin ETFs. So or actually, it's more centralized than it's ever been. So then it's different. It's a little bit different now. So that's why if it yep. did happen, now we've got BlackRock in the game, I could see it. Well, let me throw this idea out. So here's the way I'm going to determine this, okay? Technically, when Bitcoin gets back to its all-time high and it closes the month, it doesn't have a single red candle month from that point forward if we're going to go parabolic. So I'm going to give you guys my rule of thumb. Technically, we should finish higher than 65,000 this month. And technically, we should finish uh, above 70 in April. And if either of those things doesn't happen, then it's time to pay the piper and give some back, give some momentum back right. and begin to go sideways. And here's the impact I think that would happen. So just to be very clear, at this particular moment, Bitcoin has never had a red monthly candle when it's been at all time, when it's returned to all time highs. If we get one, then we have to assume that there is a change of character and that we're not going to have four months up. And if that happens, then I think everybody's like, okay, Josh, do we sell our bags then? Well, everything will come down together, but technically you're going to see what we've not seen yet. Okay. Everything you've seen in your altcoins and your meme coins, that has not been an official altcoin rally. It's been a pick and choose uh, winner loser environment, early runner environment. We have yet to have a wholesale altcoin rally. And if Bitcoin goes sideways from 60 to 70, even down to 50 over the next six months, which it is sort of due for something like that, four months at a minimum, if that happens, I think a lot of people are going to get confused. I'm not predicting that right now. I gave you the rule of thumb, no red candle moving forward. If that happens, then I believe that we would have our first altcoin rally. And I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to throw out a couple of things. I, I saw somebody pushing Peng, P-E-N-G. It's a meme coin on the yeah. Solana blockchain. It's only been out for a week and I right. do own some. I do have some whiff. And um, uh, Mo and I got into a conversation on the Discord today about the potential significance of meme coins uh, right now in uh, the crypto industry in the world and something yeah. that I don't if you guys if you guys haven't watched that take time to watch it, it it's the most fired up rant I've ever given in social media um, <laughs> <laughs> you it was yeah, you were on fire yeah. man you were just gave fire. a rant <laughs> I yeah, did oh, man yeah. I was the town on it you know but hey, um, look, it was good, thought, yeah, I'm gonna be honest listen you were spitting fire and it was perfect and i think people should hear what you have to say because it honestly it was a message that i think a lot of people feel you have a way of verbalizing what a lot of us think and it was one message i would highly recommend so if you guys are not a part of the squad discord get over there the video is in there it's it's something to listen to josh you're on fire well speaking of the discord i'm going to do a station identification break and then we're going to sign off good people and and we're gonna we're gonna move this party over on over to the Discord. But I just snapshot this. Look at that. Good. Look. That's what we like to see. I literally just wow. snapshot that. Look at those double digits. Look at those low rates. Remember that, <laughs> Eagle Man? But anyway. Mm. Yeah. So man, it's beautiful. Nice. So 
Hey, listen, I want you guys to do something for me. Would you please hit that like button? Would you please? And then when this is over, I want you guys to uh, leave a comment, right? So now here's what we're going to do, all right? I only have two links at the top of this video. I have two, two links, right? The top link on this video is the Stock Squad. That's us, good people. That's the Stock Squad. That's where the Patreon is. That's where Mo is live trading. That's why I'm giving you this momentum trading, hitting you with these plays. Like, bam, here's some money. Get in now. And then, bam, I'm out, right? And then I talk about the pre-markets and what I expect from the market. Then Josh is coming in there giving you these technicals, insane technicals, the best technicals on these internets and the TV, all right? And then Keenan hitting them with the hot option plays. And we're telling you, listen, for those of you that don't do options, we got you. We simply talk about the stock that we are buying. When do we talk about it? When it's beat down. Not when it's already, already up. We talk about it when it's beat down, right? Hey, I'm getting some more sofa. I'm getting some more palantir. I'm getting some more whatever, all right? And, and I'm saying this is for the long haul. Yeah, but it's beat down, Larry. We know that's when we buy. All right. We buy into fear. OK. And we sell into greed. So that's what you're going to get with the discord. Now, when you hear us say Patreon, we mean Patreon and discord. It's the same thing. OK. And then the, the, the link below that will be stock up universities. Stock up you. I, I literally went in yesterday and put a chapter in how to swing trade crypto, how to set a stop loss with your crypto okay so guys i want you to say your goodbyes because we're running a little late listen mo we're gonna start with you go ahead and greet the people and i'm say, i'm sorry say goodbye to the people and then we're gonna say hello on the other side which is the discord so soon as this is over sign up for the discord we're gonna wait a few minutes and then we're gonna live stream in there go ahead mo Hey, let's just be honest, family. Everybody here, we, we threw out some a lot of good things, but the best thing today, once again, happy birthday, Larry. 29 Thanks, years old is a special time in your life. Enjoy this year. <laughs> time will go quickly after that. <laughs> but family, I love it. Thank you again for having me over. Come on over and join. We're going to continue this party in the Discord and have some real good laughs. Come on, Josh. Well, you know, I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, Give a little pat on the back. You, know, you remember that um, tribute by um, Snoop Dogg? He says, I'm going to thank me. <laughs> I'm going to thank me, myself, and I. Okay, guys. You know, I did I did a very um, difficult call to make on the miners. That miners, same thing kind of what I was talking, like Larry and I were talking about Solana, and, or not Solana, but SoFi. Miners weren't attractive. They're dogs. And, you know, it was hard. I pulled the trigger. I told you guys I'm buying a, a call option Thursday, Friday, Monday going into this. Um, I think largely today, just for perspective, the Mara call, let me give you a good percentage. This was this was made. Yeah, we have a beautiful 54 percent up today alone on those. Uh, really nice gain. Um, and that was given in the discord uh, just really a lot of time. You guys could have gotten a better price than me. I talked about it Thursday, Friday, and, uh, you know, big profits on that today. Uh, and I will be taking some profits, perhaps rolling them to a later date. I mean, I'm, I don't sit and hold these. I cash in the profits. But we're going to continue the conversation in the Discord. And I'm, I, got some com I got some thoughts on Crypto Larry I want us to dive into. Thank you for having me today. It was a great show. All right. Before we get Keenan on, I got to say this because this is important especially if you're new to crypto, right? Now, I want you guys to see this comment because this has nothing to do with me. Zero to do with me talking about Pepe coin. It says, for those of you who love stock up with Larry Jones, the cryptocurrency Pepe coin, right? Is currently going up and it could have limitless money to, look at this. That has nothing to do with me. Listen. A lot of people are going to lose money falling for these phony commercials that this platform uh, has not been successful in getting down. The CEO of ADA, the, uh, you know, the CEO of MicroStrategy telling you to send your send crypto. This, these are all scams, good people. We're not promoting this stuff. 
I'm not even promoting a platform. I've been offered all kind of money. I'm not promoting any crypto platform because not this time, all right? Not this time, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. That has nothing to do with me. So if you love me, it don't have nothing to do with Pepe, Pepe coin, all right? I don't even have Pepe coin. I don't have it. I know it's a hot coin. I called it at the top. I called it when it was at the bottom and I said it was going to be one of the hottest, but I don't have it, okay? I want to be crystal clear. Don't fall for spam. Keenan. Somebody said, they were like, Keenan, where's the backpack, right? Because right. they know I got the backpack. That means I'm going to get some money. So <laughs> they say, yeah, where you going? Hey, you see what I got on? Come on, man. <laughs> I'm going to get some money. So now I want to say this. When we get over to the Stock Squad Patreon Live, I'm going to tell everybody where I will buy Bunk, where I will buy Doge, and where I will buy Shiba Inu. I'm going to hold off for that for when we go over there. But I want to say thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Man, this has been nice. So what we're going to do, good people, is we're going to be in the stock squad. We're going to be in the Patreon 10 minutes after. All right. Why 10 minutes after? I want to give you guys time to sign up so you could come and join us over at the party. OK, so a 10 minutes after seven Eastern Standard Time. All right. We'll see you then. Live, love, laugh and learn. Love you guys.